All right, everyone, I thought I'd jump in and uh, do this vid on impermanent loss and um, what that means uh, for the decks that's just dropped on Axie. So impermanent loss happens uh, pretty much when the price of the assets that you deposit into the into the uh, liquidity pool um, change either either up or down. So the more uh, volatile a coin is and the more that it can change in price, um, the more chance there is of impermanent loss. And we'll do a quick little uh, example here with uh, SLP. So there's impermanent loss to the upside and there's also to the downside. To keep things really simple, we're just gonna leave ETH at the current price at about 45.34. And this is SLP's current price. So if SLP dropped down and had a bit of a crash, um, back down to that historic level of three and a half cents, uh, we're going to see an impermanent loss of about nine, nearly 10% here. So the impermanent loss is the difference by having it in the pool uh, than if you just held the token by themselves. So if you had $500 of ETH, $500 of SLP, the $500 of ETH would have stayed the same. Um, however, the $500 of uh, SLP uh, would have dropped um, quite significantly from eight cents at three point you know, 3.5 and we're gonna see about 300 bucks um, as a uh, loss if you just held the tokens. However, inside the liquidity pool, um, it does get that extra bit of loss here, which is that 9.32%. And that's because as people are selling, um, all the way down, you're getting different prices for that um, SLP and you're gonna end up walking away from the liquidity pool with a whole lot more SLP uh, than you are of ETH in comparison to when you um, stake them both into their so it also happens on the upside, let's say SLP has a run to 16 cents, uh, we're also gonna see a loss of 4.63% or about, um, as, and that's gonna be on top of as, as if you just held the tokens themselves. So just holding the tokens is essentially an opportunity cost um, that you lose from holding the tokens because the price, um, as it goes between eight and a half cents and 16 cents, there's all sorts of different prices that you know traders are jumping into the pool to, um, to uh, to buy SLP, so you're not getting the full 16 cents from holding it. You've been getting um, smaller amounts all the way up between eight and a half and 16 cents. So uh, that's about it on impermanent loss. Uh, we'll jump into the charts and sort of see what that means. But essentially, the more volatile a coin is, um, the more chance of impermanent loss. So we're going to have a look at that in the video and see what that means for the AXS staking and the SLP staking on the new Ronin Dex. Uh, thought I'd just jump in and do a quick video on uh, impermanent loss. Uh, now that the Dex has opened up on uh, Katana um, and we've got a fair few pools sort of going on at the moment. So um, all right, the easiest way to probably uh, look into this is that impermanent loss is, um, you know, something that happens and you are more at risk to uh, with tokens that have a higher volatility. So tokens that move, you know, big swings in price like SLP um, have a much bigger risk uh, to impermanent loss than, uh, you know, things like BTC and uh, ETH that don't have those crazy, you know, 10, 20, 30% candles um, like we're currently seeing here on SLP. Uh, so if we're having a look, we've got two farms here uh, where you can get that Ron. Um, so we've got the AXS uh, and wrapped ETH and the SLP with the wrapped ETH. Now both of those tokens, uh, well actually all three of those tokens you know, are quite volatile. However, the SLP uh, wrapped ETH is much more volatile than the AXS wrapped ETH. So AXS, when it has its movements, um, nowhere near those who are 20 to 30 percent does happen sometimes, um, but SLP sort of, you know, ranges quite a lot. If we jump in and have a look at this box where it's been consolidating for a little while, you know, between the bottom and top of this box is a good 60, 70%. Um, if you went right back down to that lower low, we're looking at about 90%. So like SLP can move 100% in a day, um, no problem at all. Uh, where AXS, you know, it seems to have a much more clean market structure and not, and not just the crazy um, you know, ups and downs and, and swings that SLP has. So basically when you provide liquidity to the pool, you're, you're giving an equal amount of, of, of the two tokens. So if we're looking at what we're doing here with Katana, um, we're gonna have an equal amount of AXS and an equal amount of wrapped ETH. 
and an equal amount of SLP and an equal amount of wrapped ETH, depending on which pool you're going into. Um, so what happens with the uh, impermanent loss is if there's a swing, you know, either up or down, um, you essentially become the market, um, the market maker, or the like. If you look at it like, like like Binance, you essentially become kind of the order book. So there's no there's no real order book, but people are buying and selling the tokens um, throughout the pool, um, which does represent you know the price of the token. Um, so if SLP goes you know completely tanks, um, you're going to lose a lot. Um, you know everyone is going to be selling their their SLP to you in the pool, and and uh, you know you're losing your wrapped ETH compared to that the whole way down. Um, on the other side, if SLP goes on a run and does you know 30, 40, 50 percent or whatever it does in a day, people are then um, you know, buying the SLP off you're not, and then your your stack of SLP becomes smaller, and you don't realize the um, the actual gains as if you just held SLP and ETH. So there's two kinds of impermanent loss. Um, if we're looking at the charts, um, SLP. Probably the most, like, definitely the most risky. But people buying at the moment, um, sort of at this price, to then add liquidity to the pool, um, open themselves up to so much downside if SLP corrects. Um, however, if we do start, you know, creating new market structure and break this box, like I think we are going to be doing once we've broken that downtrend and consolidating sideways, the next thing from here for me, I'm looking for that new market structure. You actually don't you don't realize all those gains there's like an opportunity cost of having your token sort of locked up in that liquidity pool because you've you, you've set it at that original price and when you do exit um the pool and and, and take back your liquidity you end up with uh you know less slp than you started with um and you don't realize the complete gains um as the the token goes up so if slp moves up that way you're going to end up with less, so you're not seeing those full gains as if you just held the SLP token and, and, and was also holding your wrapped ETH separately. So two kinds of things, um, definitely uh, you know something to be wary of. Uh, if you haven't been to DeFi um, very much, I haven't myself, but do understand the sort of the basics of it. Um, so there's some real risk to the upside uh, and also some real risk to the downside. For me at the moment, I am staking. Uh, I am uh, providing liquidity and then staking those LP tokens um, for AXS because there's not as much volatility. And the only two choices that they give us is AXS and Wrapped ETH, or SLP and Wrapped ETH. Now, if they gave us AXS or SLP and uh, USDC, I think they're using on here, um, I would happily take one stable coin and the uh, token but at the moment we've, we've only got two choices and those two choices are two coins that are also quite volatile and essentially de depend on what on what bitcoin is doing if bitcoin decides to have a massive crash both of these things are going to have a massive crash against uh usd t uh usd prices as well so there is plenty of pools um in here uh i'll have to connect my own wallet which i'm not going to do um, but just letting everyone know about that impermanent risk. So there is risks every time you do uh, provide liquidity. But if we're looking at, can we go back to one, this part here, where are we? This is what I'm really looking at. So while you are risking, you know, impermanent loss um, as you as you provide liquidity, the pool, and then stake your tokens. We really don't quite know yet until uh, they open up this APR of what the um, what the benefits are. So they they are giving away a bunch of RON. So you're not only getting the um, the fees from uh, everybody trading inside the pool, and that's how you sort. You know, traditionally with DeFi, that would have been you know you might have some impermanent loss, but that would be made up by the fees that you get for providing that liquidity in the first place. Um, on top of that, Axie uh, or Sky Mavis actually whichever we want to call them um, are also giving away um, you know ron by then staking those liquidity um, the, those lp tokens you can then also earn ron which is going to be pretty um, pretty important um, especially for managers uh, and people who are breeding and having to move things around on ronin quite a lot um, 
the moment we're still giving those 100 free transactions, but we're, they're going to move and uh, use RON uh, the same way as uh, you know a small amount of ETH would be used for gas. So RON is essentially going to be the gas of Ronin. Uh, we now have three different tokens inside the Axie sort of you know ecosystem. And for me, I move things around a lot, so I'm just jumping in this pretty quick with the AXS because it is less volatile, um, less chance of impermanent loss, um, and grabbing myself some uh, some free RON tokens while they're giving them away, um, knowing that I'm going to have to use a lot of these probably in the future, uh, moving forward as a uh, breeder and manager. So I hope that was a, a bit insightful on impermanent loss. What I'm doing, uh, it is going to be a real risk, especially with the volatile um coins like slp axs not so much but uh still is definitely there all right thanks guys